every country on this planet has its good, has its bad, because that's what governments do, good and bad. That's what societies do, good and bad. There's no pure society. There's no society, country, or whatever that can go out there and say, we are all good, we're all bad, or anything like that. We use nationalism, glory, glory, hallelujah, as a national form, whether, look, I'm a, I'm a United States citizen. I will do whatever I need to do to defend our people against other people attempting to harm us. That is just a natural thing. But at the same time, I, as an individual human being, Howard as an individual human being, Jack as an individual human being, all of us, it is incumbent on us to make sure those that we elect don't do the things that harm us. But we also need to understand that the people we elect reflect who we really are. Whether we elect them because of ignorance or whether we elect them because of vengeance or whether we elect them for some purpose, you know, they will not replace us. Whatever reasons we do, the elected officials reflect us. When we start to justify our support for a country like Israel or our disdain for a country like Iran or anything of that nature, I think it is incumbent on us not to just listen to politicians, but to try again, listen to some history. And one of the reasons our country is allowed to make the choices that it makes, some very ill-advised choices is because, again, we don't know our history. And likewise, we allow those who profit, as Jack mentioned earlier, from war. Again, war is a very, very profitable thing. And when we allow our naivete to allow these guys to continue the profit from us, we make bad decisions. We have cascading decisions. Now, we love to hate on Iran here. If you listen to President Biden, if you listen to former president, I don't even know why I mentioned him, Trump, because it's not like he has a lot upstairs or even know a thing about history. But if you listen to their articulations, if you listen to our State Department, etc., you know, it's like it, for no reason, this one evil empire, Iran, is something to hate. Now, look, let me tell you, do these guys have a social system that demeans women? Yeah. Is, does this system have a, a social system that doesn't give women their rights, don't give people a whole lot of their rights? Yes. That's a very bad thing in the system. But does that mean we go to war for those things? No. Do we have crosses in our past where we have done things badly, just as bad as Iran. Yes. Should we have some humility when we castigate other countries for the evils that they do? Yes, we should have some humility. We should look in the mirror a whole lot of times, not only from the inception of the country or our past, when it comes to not only slavery or the genocide against the Indians or the mistreatment of our indentured servants or the mistreatments of the Chinese. Look, every country has its ills to bear. Every country has things that they have done really, really badly. And we have done our share to the nth degree. So we should have humility when we're talking about other countries, which we don't. Other countries, believe me, they know the things that we've done. I mean, while we can burn books in the United States to try to make sure our people don't know the things that we've done or to learn the historical things that we've done, we can burn books. We can, we can stop teaching it in school. We can stop DEI. We can stop critical thinking. We can stop and try all those things. But all it does is it makes a population that is fairly ignorant. And in making a population fairly ignorant, it makes a population easily controlled. It makes a population that would not see what having elect a Donald Trump in 2016, what it actually does to what people think about us, not because of Donald Trump, but because we the people saw him fit enough to elect as a country that calls itself the leader of the world that we could elect someone as unintelligent, unknowing of the world like this guy. But on the subject of Iran 
and Israel. Let's remember that back in 1953, when we, the country who says it supports democracy, overthrew Moshadai in Iran, which it started all this cascading. I mean, people have a tendency to have a window of opportunity or a window where they only see what's happening today, not understanding the genesis of the situation, not understanding that there is always cause and effect. And, you know, it becomes cliche when you hear Jack today talk about the defense industrial conflicts or when you hear Jack talk about the oil Everything is based on oil or it, it, it seems like we're here to attack oil, something that, let's say, Texas is very dependent on. Nope, that's not it at all. It's that so many Americans, so many foreigners, so many Panamanians who came and fought in the American military has paid so much for those fat cats sitting in these offices controlling the world by oil. The world is run still by oil, and we don't understand it. When you see the, the corporate greed index, also known as inflation, that all has its genesis in oil. People say, well, what are you talking about? The fertilizers that the, the farmers use, oil. The transportation of the goods to market, your, when you go to the store and whatever, oil. The flights moving around the country, oil. The electricity, mostly that we burn, hydrocarbons oil. Everything is an oil economy and it plays a major role in the enrichment of a few. Now, ask yourself what happened in 1953. The new government that it was elected in Iran said the following, all the oil companies that have royalties here drilling for this great amount of oil in Iran, which has a huge reserve. You know what we want to do? You, you foreign companies come into our land, drill for oil, take the oil and give us a what? A profit, a, a royalty. So you come to my land, you're digging for my oil and you're giving me 16 cents on the dollar for the oil that you extract out of the gold, for the oil of the Iranian people that you extract out of the ground you're giving us 16 cents. But it's not that you're giving us 16 cents. It's that we have an idea that you're not telling us how much oil you're taking out of the ground and sending it on to the markets. So Marsha Dai says, you know what, guys? We want an audit of what the British and the American allies are taking out of the ground. And for that, we overthrow, we, the British and the Americans, overthrow the government and reinstall the monarch Pahlavi into Iran. That is how this new Iranian thing started. We should, we should understand a few things here. Oil, a country overthrown because of oil and how much profit is going to be made by a particular company. The company now known as BP and others. How many of you know that? How many of the people here really condemning as super evil this country of Iran? Okay, I'm not, I'm not here to defend Iran. I'm not here to defend Israel. I'm not here to defend anybody. I'm just here to tell what has happened, stuff many of us don't know. And in not knowing, we make bad choices or we support bad choices. So this stuff didn't start yesterday. And the same with the formation of Israel a few decades ago and the defense of Israel, which we continue to do. Let's look at also how Israel was created. For what reason? Partially also because of the prejudices, the racism of America and Europe. It's a deep story, but uh, understand that, you, you know, when you create a new country where people are, you must ask yourself questions. But that's beside the point now. That is that it that also. But we must understand the history. Now, we have had problems with Iran since the overthrow of Pahlavi, Reza Pahlavi, which was a pawn then, the monarch, a pawn of the West. They, he did a lot of good things for Iran, but still, again, allowed the pilfer of the country, like we pilfered other countries, like we've done with oil around the world. There, remember many a times I said, this is a corporate greed index. There is no oil shortage. There was never an oil shortage. The way we prevent Venezuela from putting its oil on the market by attrition, because 
again, under Venezuelan law, that oil would belong to the people, not the corporations, which mean the people would benefit from the extraction of the great resources in Venezuela. We can't have that. So we rather keep that oil in the ground until we can get the appropriate government in power where corporations can just take the profit for a few. We take a look at the United States of America. We are kept sufficiently in check by giving us just enough to live on to give the semblance of prosperity as our oil companies go on to federal land and mine the oil and take the oil that should be the birthright of every single American, which means if all that oil's money, instead of going into the coffers of a few, instead of enriching a few, was going into the coffers of the United States of America, your tax rates would be much lower. You would have health care. You would have all these things instead of watching a smiling few on Wall Street talking about how great it is that oil is now $90 a barrel, even as there has never been an oil shortage as you have been lied to and told look it up. Look up where the major sources of oil are still in the ground. And I'm not an oil proponent, of course, I like green energy, but I'm just saying, even with those who purport to love oil, it's all over the place if we really wanted to talk about it. Now, the war, what Israel did to take your eyes off of the genocide in Gaza. You go ahead and you bomb a sovereign land. And when I say sovereign land, I'm not talking about Syria. Every embassy in every country is a piece of land that is at that point in time, while it's an embassy, it's the land of that country. So the Russian embassy in the United States is Russian land. The Costa Rican embassy in Washington is Costa Rican land. The Finnish embassy in Washington is Finnish land. The agreement that countries have around the world is that we have a piece of said country in every single country as a representative of our country in your land. It's a place where you, the laws of your land are, it's a place where you should have safe haven. That's why people looking for asylum can run into the embassy in Iran, can run into the embassy in Israel, can run into the embassy in Japan, can run into the embassy in England or all these other places because that piece of land that that embassy resides on, that that consulate resides on is a part of that country by decree. When Israel sent those missiles knowingly into that Iranian consulate in Syria, it invaded Iran. And it set a precedent that now these guys are at war. Look, even when the United States was at war with Japan, the Japan consulate officially our embassy was untouched because you have to have continuity in a world of many countries. Netanyahu cares nothing about what it does and how it affects the world internationally. And what we have allowed being complicit in this and the, the retaliation by Iran. And by the way, everybody saw those things flying in the air all those 300 and something drones. Iran wasn't trying to do no damage to Israel. It just wanted to make a point to the world. You know why? Because the Iran knows that if too many of those bombs landed in Israel, the United States, the great defender of Netanyahu, would have escalated themselves. In fact, over 80 drones, 80 drones, missiles, etc., were intercepted and blown up by the United States forces in the different oceans. We did it. We are a part of this war. We can say whatever we want. We can tell Israel not to escalate whatever we want. We have, we're already in this war. We are fighting against Iran when we took out those missiles, right? That dome, the Iron Dome, partially developed by the United States, the Patriot missiles developed by the United States, the da King, the David, the David system, that all those systems that seem to work perfectly around Israel, that invisible dome designed by you, the United States of America, some of it by the United States of America plus Israel. Every missile that went into the sky to knock out one of the Iranians' drones and missiles cost you 
when in regards to the Patriot missiles, every single one of the hundreds of missiles released on, on, on Friday or Saturday night, you paid four million dollars because Netanyahu wanted to make a point and take out a consulate in Israel where a few generals got killed. Just like Israel has taken out since 2012, scientists after scientists, nuclear scientists after nuclear scientists after nuclear scientists in Iran. I don't know if a nuclear scientist in Iran could get insurance because they're a marked person for Israel, for Netanyahu to take out. If we want to be respected around the world, there are two ways to be respected. We got to respect you because you may drop a bomb on us. That's the kind of respect we have today. That's the only respect we have today. But when it comes to uh, intellectual honesty, that's gone. Biden started to rebuild that, but then he hugged Netanyahu. We must know our history. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.